So we've got a beautiful day out and I'm out here with my new MacBook. I don't know if you remember, but I had a MacBook M1 Air, MacBook Air M1, if you will. And it had eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. I decided to return it and I purchased the MacBook Pro M3 Pro. Too many uses of the word pro in my humble opinion, but yeah, there you go. I do want to apologize for the wind in the background. It's really windy out, windy out here. It's pretty, but windy. 70 degrees today, I can't believe it. Here we are in early March. Anyway, I really enjoy this system. I decided to get MacBook Pro because I'm more of a heavy user. And I thought, well, Maybe I need to go ahead and purchase something a little bit stronger for editing and whatever I want to do with it. Record audio. This is the side. It has the MagSafe now, two USB-C ports, and an audio port. I found out that you can actually charge using the USB-C ports, but you got to have a pretty good USB-C charger. And on the other side, we have the HDMI, we have another USB-C, and something I've already used, the memory card slot. It's actually come in really handy. I really like it. So I probably should have mentioned this clear plastic case that you see on my MacBook Pro. It actually is an addition to the MacBook itself. It's not a part of the MacBook. So you can see a nice clear case corners are protected and down here we have protection on the corners as well as the bottom and the top so basically I can take the memory card from my camera and put it in here and have rapid access to the videos that I've recently recorded it's very cool I really like it so what are the differences between this particular system and the MacBook One, MacBook Air M1. Let's have a look. So I think the most important for me is video rendering because I do quite a bit of editing. Okay, I don't do a lot. But once a week, you'd be surprised how much, get out of here, fly. How much editing uh, you have to do for one small video. But have a look at this. So I took a 24 minute uh, 1080p with 4k source videos and I, I edited it and then I rendered it and here's the variety of systems that I've actually rendered it on so the MacBook Air 13 inch 2015 uh, which we actually bought in 2018 is one hour 38 minutes for that 24 minute video and the MacBook Air 13 inch 2020 M1 was 34 minutes, 16 seconds, a significant upgrade. The Lenovo Yoga 6 Ryzen that I have laptop scored at 21 minutes, 54 seconds. So not bad at all. Now the MacBook Pro M3 came in at 16 minutes, 41 seconds. And my desktop, I had to test that, came in at nine minutes, 58 seconds. So there's quite a difference there as far as speed. The MacBook Pro M3 Pro, if you don't say that, people think you got the base model M3. Anyway, so the score for the M3 MacBook Pro is a significant change over all the other systems. Really not all that different. Um, from the MacBook Air M1. I, I realize it is twice as fast, but I guess what I'm saying is how long is too long to wait, you know? And I would say 34 minutes is still a reasonable time to make. So why go out and purchase this system? Well, I'm glad you asked. If we come over here and go to memory and have a quick look. You can see that this system has 18 gigabytes of memory and the memory in use is high because it's actually caching files. You see that 5.7 gigabytes 
where files are cached and there's zero swap that's a good thing so we don't need to swap out anything to the ssd with the higher memory we use swap much less just like any other system really so we can look at memory pressure and you can see that it's green with the macbook air with eight gigabytes of ram it was showing a little bit of orange and sometimes red but most of the time it was orange which means that um, the utility of the memory was very high now as far as cpu goes not a whole lot going on right now you can see that idle 98 percent of the time so usually it goes up when i play a game or um, I'm doing some type of rendering for a video. So this system has 18 gigabytes of memory. I'm used to seeing 16 gigs, but this one has 18 gigabytes. Also, it has active fan cooling. The MacBook Air M1 does not, so if the processor gets overheated, the only thing it can do is slow down, and of course that affects performance, whereas with the MacBook Pro, I'm not saying performance won't be affected, but less so because of the fans. The screen is somewhat bigger at 14 odd inches where the MacBook Pro M1, it was still using the same chassis as the 2015 through 2018 MacBook Airs. And uh, because of that, you would only get like a 13, a 13.6, I think. Look at these dogs. Oh, look who's home, everybody! It's Fifi! Woohoo! Anyway, back to work. So, this screen is slightly larger, and I really do like it. How much are one of the MacBook Pro M3 Pros? Not the M3, but the M3 Pro. Well, Usually they're about $1,900, but this particular system was on sale, so I got it for $1,600, which is twice as much I paid for the uh, MacBook Pro, excuse me, the MacBook Air M1. So it has to be a significant use case for you. It isn't something that everybody needs to go out and buy. You know, if you don't need the extra memory in here, you're only using it to browse the internet or, um, you know, maybe do light tasks like word processing or something like that, and you're not utilizing that entire eight gigs of memory. There's really very little point in buying one of these. For me, it's logical. It comes in really useful for that editing. And I did put on here, even though it said you couldn't, I put on, let's see if I can get it to run. We'll go ahead and stop this. Minimize it. Minimize. Look at all this junk I've got. Now, it depends which edition of Steam I'm opening. It has to be the Windows edition. So I may, and we'll launch Whiskey. I hope. And there's a new update, but I'm not going to do that right now. And we'll launch Steam, the Windows version. And we'll go to Library. We're now in the Windows version, and you'll be able to tell because if I click Hogwarts Legacy, which is only a Windows program, I'm actually able to play it on my Mac, which is really cool. Now, if I still had the MacBook Air M1, it probably would not be powerful enough to play this game. So, you know, if you're not going to play AAA games or heavy game titles, this you can ignore. The installed version of the graphics driver actually works well. So here's Hogwarts Legacy. Pretty cool that I can play it on a system it's not even designed for and I get acceleration and all that too. 
let's go ahead and start the game and at least get a look at how it looks. So there's a lot of things that, you know, if you're going to do, like playing games and editing and, I don't know, maybe you're going to compile scripts or code and you want it to be even faster, that makes sense to me. That's me, Jim Kirk. I got a cool hat now, which is supposed to protect me. Waiting patiently for somebody. Ooh, maybe the waiting is over. Anyway, I really enjoy Hogwarts Legacy. It's pretty fun. And I can run it on my laptop. I don't have to go sit on my desktop computer, although I would say the desktop computer runs it best. So. It's up to what you prefer. Now, the screen I'm looking at is actually much darker. The um, phone is doing a good job of brightening it up so that you can see it better. But still, when you're inside, it's no problem. I usually don't play games like this outside because they're very dark. So that's it in a nutshell, why I got the MacBook Pro M3 Pro. I would avoid getting the MacBook M3 because the base model, I believe, has 8 gigabytes. And you're definitely going to need more than 8 gigabytes. And do not fall for the rhetoric that Apple is giving that unified memory is equal to twice normal memory. That's not the case. Unified memory is speeding up the road between memory and the processor it does not increase the storage size so you do end up using uh, your ssd more which you know it could wear it out faster unfortunately not like hard drives used to be they used to last a long time anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and gave you some cause for consideration before you run out and buy a macbook pro whether it's the m3 the m3 pro or the m3 max there's quite a difference between the three but the sweet spot seems to be the m3 pro just my two cents have a good one hope to see you next time on fast gadgets